Did you say, did you say, did you say cardamom? Well, you're wrong. <laughs> it's nutmeg. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there. Oh, the fond recollections that lie there. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back. Now, haven't you been tired of staring at my fireplace? Eh, gonna change the background up a little bit. So I've turned the camera around in the opposite direction, and I have several things to do today. I have a thrift haul for you. It's about, wait a minute. Yeah, it's about seven or eight items. Not much, we'll go pretty fast. Then I asked everyone to vote on four different fabrics to see which one was your favorite. I'm going to tell you which one you voted for, and I'm also going to show you the lamp. Yeah, it's finished. Now you say, oh, no, he's not. That's a bait and switch. He hasn't finished that lamp that quickly. Well, you don't know. Actually, I have finished it. I did sit here and put on, well, I didn't put on Dr. Zhivago. I put something else on and sat here for several hours working on that lampshade, and it's finished. And through the magic of television, it's going to appear right back on this bookshelf behind me. That, shit, that lamp will disappear, and the lamp will be fin is finished, and you're going to see it. That comes at the end. You're also going to see a little bit of the restoration process. Not as detailed as the Ronson lamp, the deco lamp that we saw a few months ago. All right, so the lampshade part comes at the end. Let's do the thrift haul first, but let's have a sip. Let me say it again. I was born at six o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning just as hyper as I can be, and I have always been that way. Coffee does nothing for me. <laughs> I always get people that say, don't drink any more coffee, you blah, blah, blah. Well, I've told you, I can drink a cup of coffee at midnight and go right to sleep. It just doesn't do anything. Uh, why I'm telling you that, but. Okay, let's see what's what. I'm gonna start off showing you and telling you you're gonna see one, only one thing that you've already seen before, and you're not gonna believe I'm selling it. Are you selling it? I'm selling it. Why are you selling it? Well, I'll tell you. This bowl is going to sell for about $130. That's about what they, some of them go for a little bit more. It depends on the condition. Um, and I'm not just selling it because it's worth that much. I am selling it because I have jadeite bowls, mixing bowls, and I use them. I bake in them and I bang them around and I throw them in the sink and I just use them. So the jadeite mixing bowls that I have are not out on display. This one is in such good condition and it is, I don't want to use the word rare, but it's not easy to find these vertical rib Jeanette jadeite mixing bowls. They're just not easy to find. This one is beautiful on the inside and the out. No chips or cracks and no, not even any roughness around here. Oh, maybe just a smidgen right there. And I bet that came from the factory. This bowl is almost like factory new. So honestly, I don't want to use it. Um, and Stuff in my kitchen is not on display, it gets used. So, if you collect jadeite and you have a beautiful collection of it, this might be one of the bowls, I think it's the six inch. You'll see it on the auction website. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll let that go. Uh, I'm also gonna sell, this has got condensation on the inside. It's an Owens, Illinois shaker which had a paper label on the front that is gone, you can recreate one yourself or just use it like that. 
could have been salt or pepper or flour or sugar or any other type of thing from a range set. And so it's in really good condition and a lot of people like these in their Hoosier cabinets. Look at all this green. I already have a set of the four Lotus uh, plates. Not platinite. I'm losing my, um, oh, isn't that awful? What did Anchor, uh, Vitrock, there it is. Uh, so it's a flash, it's a, it's a baked on color that's put on these. And this one is the green one. And you could also get pink and blue and yellow. They're great for salad dishes. And then there's a little lotus leaf cup you can get that sits in here as well. So just the one green plate. You want to look for scratches on these because the color can get scratched off if some overly aggressive dishwasher takes an SOS pad to it. So just that one plate. Uh, this will take me a hot minute to hold all of these up. I have six one, two, I have five of these um, made in Czechoslovakia. Um, they were made in Germany. They were made in Japan. There are some American made and they came in little tiny spice sizes. And then of course, also, you know, the big coffee, tea, flour, sugar. So they're little canister sets for the kitchen and they were all made in the 1930s. Okay, between the wars, between the First and the Second World War. So we've got all of the bottoms are in excellent condition. No chips, no cracks, no damage on any of the bottoms. I'll hold them still and let you see. The lids, most of the lids have, are going to have these little, so these little, well, they're chips. Some of them are bigger than others. But what's really nice is you can line up all of these lids so that when these are on display, you don't see any chips. You just turn the chipped part of the lid to the back. And if you go to my auction site, which is in the description box below, you'll see all these lined up at one time and you'll see how they are displayed and you don't see any chips. So there's uh, ginger. And there is uh, allspice. These are still very usable. Czechoslovakia on the bottom. See, there's one of those chips. See it on the lid, on the side. I do not mind utilitarian kitchen items having chips. You know, how do things survive the kitchen without being chipped up? There's cinnamon. You know, they were used. All right, two more. Guess the last two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't make ham without clove. There's clove. See again, a little chip on the lid. All right, and the last one, what's the last one gonna be? Did you say, did you say, did you say cardamom? Well, you're wrong, <laughs> it's nutmeg. Now this is the only one where um, the chip is on the side of the lid and the lid has to face this way. So you will see a little bit of a chip on the side of that lid because we don't want to turn the lid that way. But that's the only one where you'll actually be able to see a little bit of a chip. Okay. Crazing on these. Um, and you'll be able to add to this if you want to. You can go online and you'll be able to find the big canister, the larger size. These don't have the luster. A lot of the ones from Japan and Germany had a uh, luster and they're a little garish. Um, for my taste for the kitchen they're they're like pink and purple and that orange and but these these are a little more uh 
subdued than the luster ones, I think. All right. Ooh, we don't need a fan yet, but uh, don't worry. You know, we just sang Jingle Bells. We're going to be singing Hail the Chief. No, not Hail the Chief. What is that? That's the when the president marches in. What do we sing for um, Yankee Doodle? It's going to be summer before we know it. How would you like a... Okay, an Amber Fenton fan. It's not an ashtray. There's no... Uh, well, it's not an ashtray. It's very shallow, so I really don't know what you would put on this, but you could place it on a table. Uh, you can pass it around if you put your thumb right there. I don't know what you would put on that. Hairpins? What would you put on it? Pickled onions? Ugh, I used to... Ugh. My grandfather used to... Pickle everything. Speaking of, it happens to be that one right there, and I didn't plan that. That's his picture when he joined uh, the Navy. No, what is he there? Uh, yeah, he, he was in the Army twice. He was in the Navy. He was in the Army for four years before the war, got out, lived in Manhattan for a year, and then in 1941, he re-enlisted re and did four more years, but this time in the Navy. So he was in the Army for four years and then that went back at, to, in the war and was in the Navy for four years. But he was, a, he was a cook on a ship. I've got, oh, I've got all, anyway. He used to pickle everything. Now the pickles I like, the cauliflower I like, the eggs, but the pickled onions, mmm. You like pickled onions? Mm -mm. No. Oh, in fact, it's his ring that I wear all the time. You've asked, people have asked me about that. And uh, that was his, which, that which he got after the war. Um, made in Japan, I love this thing. It's not an ashtray. There's no divot there to hang a cigarette. And we're gonna pass it around like this. This is in the shape of what? What's on a playing card, okay? Perfect for the bridge table. You put your peanuts here, your all sorts here, and I don't know what you put over here. What did they serve at bridge? You know, I guess just mixed nuts. And you could pass this around and eat nuts out of this little. So it's Japan. That's that 1930s Japan mark on the bottom. I don't think this has any chips in it. Yeah. So you can do, uh, I love this little thing. Very 1930s. Okay, last thing, and then we're gonna look at the fabric. Now you may say, Scott, nobody wants somebody else's baby shoes. Well, I bet somebody does. Didn't everybody dip their shoes in bronze from, I don't know, when did it start, in the 1930s? And I think it continues to this day. It was still very popular when my parents were little in the 40s and in the 60s. So this is, I see a lot of these. I've never seen one with a sweet little, ouch, <laughs> picture frame. The screw on the bottom was kind of sharp. So the glass is gone. Cut yourself a new piece, it's not that hard. So a new piece of glass will fit in there. And you know, maybe you have a baby picture you would put in there even though you know, they're not your shoes. You wouldn't have to tell anybody. Uh, I think it would be funny to put a picture of the cat in there. Mm -hmm. Be a great conversation piece. People come over, mm, did you see what he's got? His cat has baby shoes. Mm. I think that would be hilarious to put a picture of the cat in there or the poodle or whatever. Okay, so Dipped in bronze, baby shoes. Now, let me get my glasses on and let's see which fabric you voted for. And you folks love, I'll tell you what, all I need to do is ask you to vote on something and whoo, I got some comments. Now, I tallied it all up on this secret white paper here. If you weren't sure, if you said, well, I don't know, maybe one, maybe four, you got disqualified. 
um, if you said <laughs> two or three, either one is fine with me, you got disqualified. I had to do this. There were hundreds of comments. It took me quite a while to go through them, but I asked for it. And I'm so glad you guys voted. It was really was a lot of fun. I cut the voting off yesterday around midday or something like that. So if you voted after that, but we had a clear, clear winner. Let's go through the colors first. Uh, number one, we had pink, pink, you stink. Now I like pink. I just say pink, pink, you stink because it's kind of fun to say. This was not, I like this and a lot of you did as well. This uh, sort of a colonial blue color. A lot of folks liked that. I don't know what color this is, but anyway, that was number three. <laughs> and number four actually has, it looks blue, but there's a greenish tint in it, or it just depends. And remember, everybody's light settings are different on their cameras and on their televisions, television sets. So it's just more of a greenish color. And that was number four. Okay, in last place with about 23 votes was uh, number three. I don't know. This actually would ha not have been too bad. It's the thickest of all of the fabrics, but this would have been okay, but um, it came in third. Here I am throwing this stuff on the floor. I've got to pick it up again. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that came in third place. Um, last place. Number three was last place. I'm getting myself all mixed up. This video is going to be two hours long. Um, in third place, with about 72 votes or so, was Pink Pink. Okay, Pink Pink. In Second place, which was close to pink, in second place with about 86 or so votes was the Colonial Blue. And that means the winner, the number one, was this greenish color with a little bit of a shimmer in it. And I had to go all the way on the back of the tally page. That had over 200 votes. This was the clear winner, but I have to say, you know I like green, and I think a lot of you might have just been, well, let's go with green because he likes green, but I, I could have gone with any one of those colors. Now, before I get out of the way and show you the lamp, which I am going to show you, it actually is finished, let's talk for a minute about um, the color scheme. Um, we're going to look at about five, very quickly, about five uh, interiors uh, that were taken right around 1928, 29, into the early 30s. And we, we decorate with different eyes today. And we're, everybody right now is so used to gray, 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 gray. Don't let's get started on that. But back in the 20s and 30s, Interior design that it was not an it was not a um, it was not a business it was not a thing. Now there were people who did interior design and it was actually as you know Dorothy Draper, who, arguably opened started the first interior design business here in the United States and that was 1925. So, it's a it's a sort of a brand new uh, industry. It's a brand new career, and. Really, you know, in the 1940s, we really start to see a lot of matching, um, especially in bedrooms, well, in living rooms too, matching drapes with upholstery and pillows and paint. There's more of a cohesiveness to what's going into our living spaces. But similar to in, in Victorian days when you just had everything, even in the 1920s uh, and 30s, although the palette changed, we have a lot of jewel tones in the 20s and then softer tones in the 30s, um, there's not a lot of matchy, matchy, matchy. Uh, it's not quite a thing, you know, the way it is today. So let's just look at some, uh, these are all 
from, I said, late 20s into early 30s, and I have to look at them here to see what I'm looking at. We'll go through, the, go through these very quickly. So I'm gonna put number one on the screen. I love this one, take a look. What do you notice? Of course, you see the fact that we've got all kinds of patterns, all kinds of colors. There's no attempt here to make anything match. Beautiful jewel tones. We've got carpets on top of carpets. Uh, we have upholstery that does not even attempt to match one another. Draperies uh, going into the uh, dining room and it's just a splash of beautiful, beautiful color. And so now here in this one, again, look at all of the color. We have what's probably a linoleum or congoleum type, uh, what they would call rug, quote unquote rug. That's that brownish one with the pattern. And then there's sort of a purple carpet on top of that. The sofa is a different color. The runner on top of the desk is a different color. Look at the drapes. Yeah. The upholstery on the straight chair underneath the light fixture that's got those parchment shades on it we were talking about the other day. Uh, there's a screen there in the dining room which so that we can't see the uh, house, house uh, help. <laughs> the domestics coming in and out of the dining room. Screen is up there. And just beautiful color. Again, lots of jewel tones. And once again, look at the carpet, look at the upholstery on the sofa. They, have, they, they're, they are not in harmony at all, nor is that chair over there in green. The draperies don't match it. Although, I if we look closely, the draperies might match the sofa. And we know what folks did in the 19... 30s, uh, 20s. We know what everybody did prior to air conditioning. They had slip covers made. That's right. So that the sweat of your body wouldn't ruin your upholstery and you wouldn't get fly specks all over everything. Let's go back and look at this photo again. The, this may be a summer photo and they may be summertime slip covers. Um, they just, they, I just have a feeling that they might, that, that that's what that might be. But still, uh, the colors are just amazing. And then uh, one more. Again. Now we do see uh, here upholstery that matches on the sofa and the uh, smaller chair, which could either be a love seat or another. We can't really tell because the picture is cut off, but we see two pieces of, of the living room furniture in the same color, but they don't match the draperies at all or the rug. And this one has to be my favorite. Boy, oh boy, this is modern cutting edge, right? We are talking about uh, what was modern at the time. Look at that deco upholstery on the chair on the left. We can just see. And there are other, there are other little hints of, of uh, deco design, modern design in, in this uh, living room as well. The table. The way the chair is designed there with the red seat. Just look closely and you'll see even those lampshades and the artwork on all but lots of color, lots of jewel tones. Um, we tend to think that, you know, things were just blah, blah, blah in the olden days, but you just go back and look at interiors from those days and boy, they were not afraid to have texture and color. And I think those interiors, uh, would give a lot of modern interiors a run for their money just my opinion but listen we all our homes should we should be comfortable in our homes and we should enjoy the things that we have in our homes that makes us feel happy and that's that's it so if you like all gray go for it and if you like all those jewel tones like i do then just mix and match and have a good time okay i talked way too much i'm going to now get out of the way Let's take a look at a little bit of the restoration of the lamp and then it will appear right here behind me. So don't tune off yet, but I will say right now, thanks for watching. Be safe. Go check out those items in the old curiosity shop. The link is in the description box below. And don't forget to wait for the cat and wait for the lamp. So long for now.
Okay, everyone, thank you for staying uh, to watch this little lampshade uh, restoration. Here it is with the old silk, very, very dry rotted, as you can see. And these were all stitched by hand onto these metal frames. And I've restored one or two of these before. If you remember the Aronson lamp I restored, oh, maybe a month, two months ago. You can see here, I'm pointing at the little metal clips that hold the inner frame inside. Um, those have to come out. Uh, but you've got to be very careful because if you bend that metal too much, it will snap off and then you've got to solder on new pieces. So I'm being very, very gentle here. And thankfully, none of them broke. So four of these clips will be bent and then I can pop out the, uh, the inner shade. Now I'll, I'll say this while I'm working on this. I just use whatever I have. I, I'm not a professional restorer, as I've said before. Uh, I'm not a, a upholsterer or a seamstress or anything professional. So I just use the scissors I have, the tools I have. I know some of you get annoyed at me. Oh, you're using the wrong scissors. You're using the wrong thread. Oh, I just have a good time with, as I said, the materials that I've got on hand. Okay, there it is. It's out. You can see, and um, the filigree sh metal shade there is in good condition. It has a wonderful old bronzy kind of a patina on it. And now I'm going to just, uh, well, I'm, I'm showing you how bright gold uh, the original silk is. And again, you could get these shades in many different colors, many different types of fabrics, so we don't have to put gold back in it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, you know, I'm not pinning anything down and I'm not writing anything down. These are all just um, uh, very informal measurements and informal cuts. We're always going to cut off more than we need because, of course, if I cut the fabric too small, I'm up the crick. All right, so basically, I need a piece of fabric that's about 16 inches long by 5. Now, when you measure this, it's only about just a little over four inches top to bottom. But remember, we need enough to wrap it over the wire frame and to be able to stitch it underneath. So I'll give myself, you know, a nice extra inch, inch and a half, something like that. And so we're gonna put this aside and cut out 16 by five, maybe 16 by six, just to be safe. Now, where are my scissors? Well, the sun is going over the other side of the buildings here in Philadelphia, and we've got about, oh, another 45 minutes of light here on the window ledge. But I want you to show I've got my piece of fabric cut, and all I'm really concerned about is, do I have enough to wrap around the bottom of the frame? Of course, enough to wrap around the top of the frame, and I do. And I've got to iron out that wrinkle in there. In fact, you know, I'll probably just leave that wrinkle in. It's not going to make a difference. Remember, this fabric is going to be pleated. It's going to be gathered at the top and pleated the same way that, uh, that the original was. We'll have another peek at that, as you can see. All pleated around here at the top and folded over top of itself. Look how pretty it was before it faded. Okay, and so easy easy to do um, and uh, boy that's going to be really pretty when the light is shining through it um, I, I do like that color 
a lot. So now I've got to go get some thread and a needle and oh, oh I don't know turn on an old maybe I'll turn on Dr. Zhivago isn't that about three hours long that ought to keep me settled while I'm working on this shade uh, and you will see the results stay tuned